welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Ashley, and here on my channel, I talk all about applique, embroidery, Etsy, and being a small business um, from home. So normally you see me working on all my uh, multi-needle machines. I have three, and I run two um, Etsy shops full-time from my home. Um, but today I'm going to be doing just a little different tutorial for you guys. I've had several people that are beginning or um, just trying to get into the applique and embroidery business reach out and they would like to see a tutorial about how to hoop and do a basic applique on a single needle flatbed machine. Now I do not have the brand new PE 800 or even the 770 that most people use um, but I am going to show you guys how to do the basics on a single needle machine. I will be using my brother PE 500. Um, it's a 4x4 only machine, um, so it's a very small hoop, um, but today I'm going to be using this to do a little baby bodysuit um, to add to my shop. So before we get started and get our design on the machine, I'm going to show you guys exactly um, what you're going to need to complete the first project doing an applique. Um, so I'm going to be using a um, baby bodysuit, um, a newborn one from um, ARB Blanks. You will also need some type of stabilizer. If it's a clothing piece that you're going to be doing, I highly recommend using Cutaway. Um, the well-known um, saying is, if you wear it, don't tear it. Um, so I use poly mesh. That's my preferred. Um, and then I'm also going to use a piece of tearaway stabilizer as well. I feel like that just helps get the hooping nice and tight. Um, a couple other things you're going to need is a pair of small scissors. I like these little curved applique scissors that I buy on Amazon now. I used to get them at Walmart, but they're on Amazon now. Um, I'll have those linked below. You'll also need some embroidery thread. Um, this is Madeira. I'm going to use a light uh, purple, and then I'm also going to be using white just specifically for the item I'm going to be stitching. Um, but you want to choose ones appropriate for whatever you're going to be doing. Um, you'll also need your bobbin filled with bobbin thread. On these machines, um, the flatbed machines, I fill my own bobbins. Um, but you can buy pre-wounds as well. You'll also need whatever fabric you're going to use for your applique. I'm actually doing a faux smocking design, so I'm just going to be using plain white. Um, and then I also recommend for fabrics that you're going to be doing applique on to use some type of um, adhesive on the back of it. I prefer Heat and Bond Light. Um, you can buy these in much smaller packages um, at like Walmart, Joann's, um, anywhere that has craft and embroidering supplies. Um, I buy mine by the bolt on Amazon since it's much more economical if you're doing a lot of things. Um, so I think that's all the basics that we're going to need today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the design. I'm going to be moving over to my machine. So I currently use um, So What Pro software. I had a different design picked out and ready to use, but then I pulled it up and I realized that it may not be the simplest of examples. So I have switched designs that I'm going to use. I'm going to have to go pick out new fabrics and thread colors. Um, but what this design is, is it makes a basic um, shape around little, and then it also has a little applique bow. So I am going to um, change some colors around on this. This is the 4x4 design. Um, in this design, it gives you one, the first stitch is going to be our um, placement stitch for the main fabric in the background behind little. Um, the second one is going to run again in that exact same spot. That's called a tack down stitch. And what you're going to do is you're going to have run the first one, place your fabric, run the second one. Um, and then we're going to stop and we're going to trim very closely around all those little nooks and crannies on this design. Um, if you're starting out, a very simple shape design is usually recommended until you get the hang of um, trimming because it can be a little tedious on these small designs. Um, next, it's going to run another placement stitch to show you where to place your fabric for the bow. Once it's done, you're going to place it um, and it'll run that same um, outline again. Um, for the tack down and then we'll stop and trim that. Once that's done, then it's going to go into what's called the satin stitches. Um, some designs have different uh, finishes. This is a satin finish. It's a nice, thick, full finish around the design. Um, you'll also see zigzag and bean as other common ones. Um, there are others as well. Um, so after all the fabrics are placed um, in this particular design, it's going to run um, the outline for that main fabric background all the way around, um, and then it's going to do the bow. 
it's going to go in and do the wording and then the design itself has the little the um, word sister below it too so we're going to let that run too um, i think this is going to be cute i am going to do different colors than what's shown here um, just because it I see a lot of people ask questions in groups. You do not have to follow the colors, the exact colors of what it recommends. That's totally freedom of choice for you. I'm personally going to choose much different colors than what's shown here, um, just based on what fabric I select and my own personal preferences. Set up over here at my machine now, and we're doing that little sister design with the background color. I'm going to do just like a classic white and pink um, seersucker fabric, and then for that little bitty bow, I've chose just a sparkly cotton fabric um, in a lavender color. Now this is a scrap piece of fabric I already have. It already has my heat and bond light on the back, so I this one's already prepped and ready to go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a piece of my um, fabric now. I'm going to cut it out. It's about four inches wide for the design. I'm going to cut it just a little bit bigger than that to give myself some extra room and about three inches high. Um, and then I'm going to iron some of my heat and bond light on the back. Now normally I use uh, cotton fabric for my designs, however I am going to use this seersucker material. Um, seersucker does have kind of a texture. Um, when I iron this it's probably going to iron some of that texture out and that's okay. I'm more looking for just the fabric look. Um, it was just the colors and my simple design that I like. So I've cut my piece of fabric just a little bit bigger than what we're going to need and now I'm going to cut a piece of um, heat and bond light to go on the back of this. What I usually do um, is set my piece of fabric there. If you have a cutting board, you could use that. I um, do not have mine on my table right now. So I'm just gonna cut approximately a little smaller than my piece of fabric. And then I'm gonna take this over to my iron and let it heat up. Um, I'm just going to iron down my fabric, make it smooth, and then place um, my heat and bond light on and um, run that over with an iron. I like to keep mine at about a, I don't, I'm not sure the temperature, mine just goes on, um, let's see, like fabric type. I like to keep it on the lower side of the cotton setting. I just have a basic um, shark one from, you know, just like Walmart. So nothing special. I do also have uh, something similar to like a Cricut, um, Easy press like mini and I do use that for my applique sometimes if I just want something that heats up quickly is it's faster than my iron um, so what I'm gonna do is just iron my fabric real quick so you'll see as I'm ironing it does kind of remove some of that texture off the seersucker and that's okay I'm gonna place my piece of heat and bond light down just making sure it's not hanging off my fabric because then it'll get that on my um, ironing mat. I just use a basic ironing mat um, that I bought on Amazon, um, but you can use anything, a ironing board, uh, just like a mat, anything that you have. Um, so there's our piece of fabric all ready to go. Like I said, the other one's already prepped. Once this cools a little bit, um, you just want to remove the um, paper backing on it. And you'll notice that we have that nice shiny look to the design or to the back of the fabric. That's your heat and bond light. Um, so we'll place it down. And once the design's all stitched, we can iron that again and that'll adhere that to the shirt. So the next piece um, before we can start stitching is to get our um, garment hooped. There's two main ways that you can um, stitch on bodysuits or small items on a single flatbed machine. The first one is actually hooping your item in your hoop and I'm going to demonstrate that. The other way is that you can hoop your um, just your stabilizer and float your design and I will demonstrate that um, as well if you're interested in trying that. That can be kind of easier to do if you're using a bigger hoop size on a small garment. Um, but 4x4 four four is going to fit pretty well inside this um, newborn onesie. So I'm going to go ahead and um, flip my item inside out. There are multiple ways you can do this, and like I said, multiple different stabilizers you can use. Um, these are definitely my preferences, but other people do have other preferences, so you can try different things out and see what works best for you. Um, so I use poly mesh for my cutaway. Um, I do use a tiny bit of spray adhesive, 
and place my poly mesh down. You can also buy poly mesh that's fusible that you can just iron onto your shirt with um, an iron. I'm also going to, and that goes directly against the garment. Next, I'm going to do my tear away. I use, again, a light spritz of adhesive. I'm going to place that down. The kind I use is not super sticky. It's just enough, as you can see, it kind of lifts. It's just enough to kind of hold it there in place. Um, so I'm going to carefully flip my garment back right side out. I'm get it all straight. I flip mine over, and then what I do is I fold it in half to get a nice center crease. And I kind of line everything up, and then I just press with my finger. I don't heat press mine or anything um, to do that with the stabilizer in there. Um, it gives a nice um, line. If you're doing it a different way without the stabilizer in it, you may need to press it to be able to see that line. So we're going to take my hoop. Don't mind my hoops. They're pretty um, nasty looking because um, I use I used to use them on fleece jackets and sweatshirts. So I'm going to um, loose, uh, loosen the screw here so I can pop my inner ring out. The um, This is what's going to be what goes inside your garment. Um, and I'll demonstrate that. Now this can kind of be the hard part, especially starting out um, for people is the hooping. And that's why I'll demonstrate two different ways to do this. So we've got our center marks here. And then most of these hoops have um, exactly where the center is. That may not be like the exact measured center on on the hoop, it may be like off to one side or the other, but that is where the center of the design or the stitch feel is. So you wanna pay close attention to that. Um, so we're going to line that up. There we go. And then I'm gonna take the top center hoop and um, kind of finish lining that up there. All right. And then you would just press this down nice and carefully. It can be kind of hard to push down in. If you cannot get it pushed down in, you may need to loosen um, your hoop a little bit more. Um, so I'm gonna loosen it. That looks like it's nice and straight and center. And that's how you hoop a garment. Um, you'll, it looks kind of off center because we have um, the place where our um, hoop hooks into the machine. Now, we need to be super careful because we obviously don't want to stitch through the back. So if you are hooping your garment, make sure it's nice and tight. Make sure you tighten down that um, hoop. Wrong way. Make sure it's nice and tight. Um, and then what's nice about these is they unbutton in the back. Um, you'll need to flip your garment almost inside out while it's hooped. Um, and then now you have the choice. You can either stitch through the neck hole. Like I said, A or B blank ones are great because they unbutton there, um, at least for the girls ones. Um, you can stitch through there or you can stitch through um, the bottom. You're going to have to hold your garment out of the way. That is kind of tedious on these um, smaller um, uh, garments and the smaller with the hoops. Um, so we'd have to be holding that out of the way as it stitches. Um, the other option is that I'll show you guys. I'm going to loosen up my hoop to undo this and pop everything out here. Um, if I had to recommend something, I would say hooping is going to give you the most secure stitch place, but it is harder to keep your garment out of the way of the hoop. So both ways have their pluses and minuses. If you just want to float your item, you're going to take your um, stabilizer and you're going to go ahead and hoop that. Just like we did with the other, the um, bottom portion below your stabilizer, and then you're going to press the top one down in, and you're going to want to make sure that's nice and tight, no wrinkles, it's not super loose. I'm actually going to tighten this hoop just a little bit before I even put it in because it's going to fall out. That's a, 
bit tighter. So you get it nice and tight because it without the garment you have to have pretty tight. Um, so let's try this again. There we go, nice and tight. I'm gonna just do a couple more twists there to get it. And now we have our safe, our um, nice taut. Um, smooth surface and that's when I go ahead and spritz with my adhesive spray to hoop when you're floating you're gonna want your garment to be inside out um, so here's my here's my bodysuit this is the back of it this is gonna be the front um, I am gonna fold it in half again while it's inside out if I'm floating get the buttons out of the way here all right and now what I do is I put my hoop down I take that nice center mark and I'm going to lay the onesie down along that imaginary center line so I'm using the little um, notch up here and then the little mark down here to line those up I'm going to press just that one side down, I'm going to fold it over and press that side down. And then now you still have to stitch through um, the opening of either the hole in the bottom or the neckline, but you can kind of move your garment around, but you have to be super careful not to um, really move it or shift it um, and, or your design will be off. So we're gonna leave it like that for now. Some people do pin these down right here. Um, that's definitely an option. What I'm actually gonna do is my little sewing clips that I use for everything. I'm just gonna pin um, up here to the top of my extra stabilizer just to kind of hold it in place. I'm gonna um, probably stitch through the neckline on this one um, and go from there. So now we're ready to get our machine going. Now, since we have everything prepped and ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the machine on and get our design on and up on the machine. Uh, this is, it's gonna ask you to move and say, okay. Now the screen on this may be different than your machine. It may be a bigger screen down here and, and transferring the design might be a little differently. Unfortunately, this one is just a little bit older machine um, and I bought it super cheap one year for Black Friday. It's been many years ago. Um, so there are things that are different. Um, yours will probably have a little USB icon. Mine I have to transfer from the computer. After that though, the process should be the same. Um, so I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna go ahead and Place that from the computer. So our design's now on the screen, so I'm gonna select it. It does make it pretty difficult to see on these machines, um, just with a smaller screen. And then there's gonna be like a little, it almost looks like a pocket with an up arrow that I'm gonna click right here. And that just puts it on the machine. Now it says there's eight steps. Um, it's still waiting for us to put the hoop on. Um, and then it kind of shows you um, which step we're working on. You can also reference the like printout that you can get with most designs or if you have software just on your um, screen of your computer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our presser foots up. We're gonna make sure our bobbins in here. It's pretty full. So we place it in with the thread coming out this way. Just like a sewing machine, brother sewing machine. Um, goes around, put back in. I'm going to carefully um, put my hoop underneath the presser foot and slide it back. And then um, there's going to be two little um, pegs on the side of my machine, or the hoop, I'm sorry. And there's going to be two slots to put those in on the machine right here. So I'm going to snap those in carefully. And you'll hear a nice click. Um, so. I am going to go to click adjust on um, my screen and make sure that the placement is exactly where I want it on my shirt. Layout, and then, cause it kind of centers it. So I think I'm gonna probably move it towards the top of the hoop. Okay, um, and let's see, there's a little trace button. So I'm gonna click trace so I can see if it's where I want it on um, the bodysuit. So 
So the next thing is going to be threading the machine. Again, the very exact steps might vary a little bit um, from machine to machine, um, but I'm going to use this light pink. If you're using the larger spools of thread, the 5,000 meter ones, you'll want to get a thread stand that sets separate from the machine. Um, I'm just going to use these small ones today and then um, thread it normally. I'm going to use just the regular threading area. I put the spool cap on. It goes through one. This is to go over if you're winding bobbin thread, but we're going to go down through two, down to three, up to four, and then five is down here. Six is going to be to put it through the hook in front of the needle. And then if you want to do the automatic threader, if yours works, you can't. I don't think mine works anymore. I just manually thread mine. Um, to do that, I do put my presser foot down and I just thread it myself. Um, sometimes that's easier, um, well, normally for me. Um, once I thread it, um, I personally do make sure um, that I do put it down through the presser foot um, just so it's out of the way and ready to go. It doesn't get tangled up on the presser foot. That's a lot of extra, but I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to all trim it later. So now, um, now we're ready to start stitching. Um, you'll notice when I put that presser foot down, my uh, light's going to turn green. And now we're ready to go. This is where you're going to want to be ready to hold um, your garment out of the place. Um, so it's not going to start stitching um, through your garment. So I'm going to click start. And right now it's going to stitch out what's called the placement stitch. So after that um, step is completed, what it does is it pauses there for you. And I'm actually going to put my screen back to the steps. Um, and it's going to wait for you to place that fabric. So I'm going to lift my presser foot up to give me a little extra room. Um, you can take the hoop off to do this. I'm not going to. I'm just going to slide this in there and make sure it's covering the area that it's going to be stitching. I made my fabric plenty big, almost too big. All right, so now we're ready to go again. We're gonna lower our foot and press start. Now this does what's called the tack down stitch. It's literally going to tack down the applique fabric. Um, and once it's done, it'll stop and that'll allow us um, to trim the fabric off of there. If I did not mention, this design is from Embroidery Boutique. I will leave the link for it down below. Um, they have matching um, Big Sister designs as well for this. moved it back to the center um, or to the starting point for the next um, piece of the design. I'm going to go ahead and lift my presser foot up and to trim this off I am going to take my hoop off. So you're going to use this lever right here. You're going to pull it back um, and then lift gently your hoop off and then carefully pull your hoop out. Now while you're trimming you want to make sure that you don't unhoop the garment. We're just going to carefully trim with our scissors around um, this whole piece of fabric.
ready to do the um, stitching for the bow. Now this is personal preference. I'm not going to change my thread out just for the tack down and placement stitches. You can, um, as long as it's not a color that's going to um, really show through, I don't feel like you have to change it for that. Um, again, that's personal preference. You can certainly change it to the purple since I'm going to be doing purple. I'm going to lower my presser foot and go ahead and click start. It's going to now stitch out the placement stitch for the bow. And this should be pretty quick. All right, and it's going to stop for us. And so next I'm going to... Um, just get a small piece of this pre-made fabric and place down to do the applique for the bow. Um, so I'm going to raise my presser foot, place the fabric down. Lower it back again and let it run that um, tack down stitch before I trim it. Do what I did last time. I'm going to raise my presser foot. Always raise that before you move the hoop. Um, I'm going to um, press this so I can release my hoop and I'm going to trim um, the fabric for that bow then. Once I'm done with that, the rest of it's going to be the satin stitches so that will be um, just a lot more um, quick stitching and um, you unfortunately with these smaller machines you do have, kind of have to still sit here and um, quote unquote babysit the machine. Um, to make sure that it's not going to be stitching through your garment unless you're doing a very flat item that it'll stay out of the way. Um, but um, this part, next part will go pretty fast. This total design um, in this size is 22 minutes. It says that up on the screen. Um, most of these machines do give at least give you a good estimate on how long it's going to take. Um, that's just the stitch time though. That doesn't include the time it takes to um, trim. So that's pretty good. Um, as long as it's a nice, thick satin stitch, it's pretty forgiving of your um, trimming. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on the machine. So this next part is going to be doing the outline around the pink fabric. So I already have my pink matching thread on the machine. I'm going to lower my presser foot and let that stitch. satin stitch step is done um, so now I need to change out my thread color it's going to stitch the little bow design next um, so that's going to be that lavender color now there's two ways you can take your thread off um, the official way is you should cut it up here by the spool and then pull un undo it from the um, needle make sure your presser foot's up and pull your thread out from the bottom people will say that'll help thread from getting breaking and getting caught up in um, the insides So I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing for my light purple color. Place it on there. 
use a spool cap just to keep it there. Goes through step one, step two, three, four, oops, three and four, down here to five and six. And then um, you can use your needle, again, use your needle threader or if you're like me and just manually do it, because these needle threaders do have a tendency to break and not work very well. Um, so I do mine manually. And I do put the presser foot down just so um, it's out of the way and makes it a little easier for me to thread the needle. Um, and then I do put um, my tail through the um, presser foot. I can lower the presser foot now and go ahead and start on the bow. the part that um, stitched out the bow is done so I'm going to go ahead again and switch out my thread colors um, I press her foot up pull it down and I'm going to use I think like a brighter pink color um, this is Madeira as well um, to do the where it stitches out the little across here um, I think that'll be bright enough on that light pink background so same exact process. We're gonna put the spool on. I like the spool caps to keep it there. I'm just gonna quickly thread it this time. Make sure it's not tangled at the top. All right. Put it behind the thread guide. Manually thread the needle. Um, one thing I did not talk about was the actual needles for the embroidery machine. I prefer to use a ballpoint needle um, when stitching on. Um, stretchy material like knits or basically bodysuits um, and I just ordered the basic embroidery ones on Amazon. I'm gonna go ahead and click start on this um, and um, nothing special that I order for my single needles. actually stopped the machine because I could hear something going on and what had happened is my thread got caught up here I just did untangle that um, so if if you did not catch that it could and would probably break your needle um, I caught it before that happened um, but if you need to go backwards steps if that should happen anywhere um, you're gonna click adjust sorry and the needle that has a plus and minus and we're not gonna go back thread colors but we're gonna go back stitches so it's just going to jump you back a couple stitches. I'm going to jump back a couple just to make sure I get back to where I was when I first heard that noise, just to make sure we're not missing any stitches. Um, and then um, I did go ahead and, like I said, I untangled that a little bit. It was kind of starting to tangle up here at the top. Um, so let's go ahead and start and just keep a close eye on it.
applique portion of this shirt is done, it's just going to go back and it stitches sister down at the bottom. Um, I think I'm going to switch that out and go back to that purple color. I think that'll coordinate well. Um, and give another little pop of that purple to kind of tie it in a little again. again. Um, now when I list this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer to add a name below and a coordinating font if they'd like it. Um, but I'm going to leave this one unpersonalized. Um, and then I will also um, be stitching out a big sister version um, so I can um, list them as uh, an option to purchase as a set or just um, one or the other individually. Um, a lot of people like to ma uh, make matching items for um, pregnancy announcements or big sister, little sister um, for when the baby's born. Um, so that's always a good market to look into if you're looking for new ideas um, for um, products for your shop. All right, so we have that re-threaded again. I'm going to lower the presser foot and just let it stitch out that one last word. onesies finished sewing. I'm going to click OK um, and release my hoop from um, the machine. Raise my presser foot so I can get that out of there. And there we have it, our first little sister um, bodysuit. Um, so since we um, floated this, you could see it was easy for me to unclip that and then I could kind of move my um, opening down so it was easier to stitch that sister and not um, have to hold it out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out of the hoop. I'm going to re release it a little bit and pull that out. Now on the inside of the shirt, um, you're going to have some stitching. I'm going to go ahead and pull my tear away away. You can pick out some of the extra tear away if you'd like. It's not going to hurt to leave it there though. And then what I do is um, trim just um, not super close, but around um, the applique design. And then I choose to um, iron on a backing on the back of my um, all my kids' shirts, um, no matter what the size. Some people use the brand name Tender Touch. I use Cover a Stitch from All Stitch because um, that's the inside of the shirt. And that just keeps it from being scratchy against the um, skin. So I'm going to flip this back right side out. And we do have a few jump stitches to trim. Um, that is one thing with um, the single, more entry level single needle ones. We're going to have to jump those little, um, or trim those little um, stitches. And then sometimes where the um, started. And then same down here between the letters, there's some jump stitches. I'm going to trim those real quick. All right. All right. So here's our completed um, newborn bodysuit on the little four by four um, little sister design on it. And that's about the right size for these newborn onesies. I don't make much bigger than that in the four by four size, but if you already have a four by four machine and that's all you have, uh, my recommendation is to utilize it to the best of its cap capabilities um, until you're ready or able to upgrade to a bigger machine. Um, I don't usually recommend starting with it, but if you have it, um, put it to use. Um, newborn onesies are a great thing to do with it. And then there's many other things that you can do like left chest monograms and appliques, 
um, pocket t-shirts, things like that. So there's so many different things you can utilize that 4x4 hoop and machine with. Um, so if you have one, go ahead and get started, use it, um, and start saving up for that bigger machine that you're going to want. Um, so I just want to say thank you guys for joining me today. I hope this tutorial was um, helpful. Um, and if you'd like to see anything future, um, in the future that's very similar, um, different tutorials or anything, let me know down below specifics on what you'd like to see. I do have some more um, basic applique um, videos coming up where I'm going to be using my multi-needle machines, um, but if there's something else you'd like to see on um, the single needle 4x4 or flatbed machines, I'd be happy to um, record those and um, for you guys as well. So until next time guys, see you later. Mm -hmm.